Oh my god, we finally have a new Mario Strikers game on the way. 15 years after the last entry being Mario Strikers Charged on the Wii. Yep, Mario Strikers Battle League is on the way to Nintendo Switch, and it looks absolutely incredible. So you know what that means, it's time to break out the old analysis machine and see what secrets and hidden details the reveal trailer might have in store. And first things first, the hilariously edgy and over-the-top presentation that the series is famous for is back in full force. Okay, maybe mostly full force. Characters still drop in like bombs from the sky before a match begins, and they have some serious toot. Just look at Luigi here. The man's ready to throw down. Even Toad isn't taking any crap, which somehow makes him even cuter. But this time, the characters are all decked out in some crazy intense looking gear, such as how DK and Bowser here are basically wearing full body armor. And it's a presentation that's made even better by the fact they now have full control over who exactly is on your team. Point is that teams can now be made up of the biggest Mario personalities that we've come to know and love, including Rosalina for the first time in series history. And yes, this also means that Toad's finally been upgraded to full character status. In fact, the trailer even shows off the character selection screen for multiplayer, and it reveals 10 characters total, who are all assignable to different positions. Unfortunately, with the sidekick characters gained the boot, like Hammer Bros, Birdos, and Koopas, the roster here is actually smaller than any previous game, at least so far. So we can only hope that there are more unlockable characters available beyond just this. I mean, there is easily room for at least 6 more character slots. Plus, Daisy is nowhere to be found, which is a bit odd considering she's long been a standout character of this series. Hmm. Now there is one more playable character that we haven't mentioned yet. Sort of. Being Boom Boom is automatically assigned to the goalie on each team. Unfortunately, it seems he's put Critter out of a job, who was the goalie in the two previous games. Man, those poor Kremlings just can't catch a break. At any rate, the goalie seems to work exactly as they always have, being controlled by the computer until they get possession of the ball, at which point a human player takes over until the ball gets back into play. And on that note, the core gameplay appears to be extremely faithful to the previous two games, and especially the first one. This is still a 5-on-5 five -five game of soccer in which you can slam opponents into electrified fences, use power-ups to gain an advantage, and deploy special shots in order to score a goal worth twice the points. But this time, those special shots have received a bit of an overhaul, as they're now called Hyper Strikes and require a special power-up. So, instead of being able to go for one at any time by simply charging a shot as a team captain, you now need to first grab an orb that will appear on the field. Once you have, it'll electrify your entire team, seemingly making it so any of them can take the shot. And from this point, the process seems to be identical to before, where you need to fully charge a shot without being interrupted in order to bring up a special meter that dictates the power of your Hyper Strike. Now you just need to carefully time two button presses so that it lands in the orange or better yet blue zones in order to unleash an incredibly powerful shot that will net you two points if it lands in the goal. Now, unlike the GameCube version, these shots appear to be unique to each character. Luigi, in what might be a reference to his vacuuming days, unleashes a tornado that can suck up any defenders in his path, including the goalie, which can leave the goal completely unobstructed, whereas Yoshi's Hyper Strike encases the ball in a massive egg that bounces around, knocking away anyone that it touches, before breaking apart and firing the ball at the goal. How exciting! It seems that these custom Hyper Strikes might act as a replacement not just for the first game's special shots, but also the unique special abilities found in the Wii sequel as we don't see any other special moves being used here. Now unfortunately, we don't see many other Ultra Strikes being used, although we do just barely get a glimpse of Peaches, which appears to have a curve to it, and we can kind of piece Bowser's together, starting with the opening cutscene, which reveals that Bowser actually grabs the ball and lights it on fire with his fire breath, before using his hands to throw it at the goal during actual gameplay. How is that legal? But perhaps my favorite part of the Hyper Strikes is how the art style changes completely during them, and it looks sick especially since it evokes the art style used in the promotion materials for the entire series. Brilliant stuff! Beyond Hyper Strikes, you'll be able to make use of items to get the edge on your opponents too, just like in past games. During the trailer, we can see banana peels that'll slip up opponents, green and red shells that'll knock them down, and the bombs that you can toss that'll send them flying. And this time, they'll even run a short ways before detonating. It's pretty brutal! And that's not all, because even though we may not see them used during actual gameplay, based on the HUD we know that mushrooms will appear too, likely awarding a speed boost just like in the previous games. In fact, so far all of these items are nothing new, and don't even represent half of the items found in the previous games. So at the least, there are likely plenty more items we have yet to see. In any case, it seems we might still only be able to hold two items at a time, given the fact that we never see more than that held by a single team. And that was also the same limit in previous games too, so it makes sense. 
But there might be one thing that's different here, and that's how you actually obtain items. Because in the previous games, a team used to be awarded an item anytime a teammate was tackled that didn't have possession of the ball. It was basically the equivalent of a yellow card. And that very well still could be the case. But check this out. Yeah, that's an item box that just dropped onto the field. Pretty much just like the ones in Mario Kart. And we're guessing that might be the main way that you collect items now. Especially since it only appeared after the team on the left here used one of their items, freeing up room for another. But let's get back to the HUD for a moment, because it seems that each team is assigned a team color and icon. Those icons include spike balls, four-leaf clovers, tornadoes, rocket ships, a flaming soccer ball, a top hat, Yoshi egg, lightning bolt, and what might be a sword? It's hard to tell. Now are these random or might people choose them for yourself? In any case, the icons and colors are independent, as the tornado icon can be seen in a couple of different colors. Furthermore, not only do the players actually brandish those icons on their gear, but their gear is even recolored to match the team's color, making it easier to see them out on the field. Which means, in the case of Yoshi, his entire body changes color, as he can be seen in pink, yellow, blue, and green throughout the trailer. Speaking of gear, that's one of the biggest areas changed in this game, as it can now equip new gear not only to change your looks, but also your stats in five different categories, being strength, speed, shooting, passing, and technique. And this equipment is spread across four different types for your head, arms, body, and legs. We can see that you'll have to actually purchase this gear individually, using the coins that you earn throughout the game. But it's a small price to pay for that sweet Dragon Ball Scouter. But there's not too much to say about it all for right now. Besides the fact that we can tell that you can use the right stick to rotate your player to see how the gear looks in advance, or you can press the plus button for an in-game guide. Oh, and when you go to choose a character on the character selection screen, you're able to easily choose whether to wear gear or no gear, which could make for a more balanced experience. Perhaps one of the coolest new additions about Mario Strikers Battle League is how every stadium is actually two. Wait a second, what do I mean by that? Well, just look at it. The two sides of the stadium look completely different, with the left one looking like a Mario level, and the one on the right being Bowser's Castle. The very first scene of the trailer actually shows how this comes to be where the two completely different halves just kind of phase into existence before being fused together to form a single whole. Whoa! And this isn't just for show, as every single gameplay clip exhibits the same two theme style. The differences even extend to the look of the pitch itself, like with the differing ground logos, goal style, and even the color and pattern of the electric barriers. Which isn't just a neat touch, but will also make it far easier to remember which side is yours. But hold up just a second, if the stadiums each consist of two halves teleported from elsewhere, where exactly are these matches taking place? Well, the entire stadium appears to be located within some kind of giant metallic contraption, which itself appears to be floating in space based on the star backdrop. Weird! And sure enough, nearly every single scene of the trailer takes place underneath a star-filled sky. But, there is one single scene that takes place during the day, which could be either a different location, or more likely, some kind of projection on the dome that surrounds the stadium. At any rate, let's go ahead and break down all four stadium halves that we've seen so far. And let's start off with the Mario looking one, which according to this screen may actually be called Mushroom Hill, which we base on the mushrooms on a hill. Yeah, we're real detectives here! And this entire backdrop looks like it was ripped right out of Super Nintendo World. What, with a giant mountain here featuring multiple levels along with coins, bricks, and warp pipes, and even the different layers of exposed ground. Which itself was of course based on Super Mario 3D World. And there is one unique feature that we can just barely see at the very start, being an NES style castle at the very top of it all. And it's of course right next to a flagpole. When it comes to the pitch itself, the field features a question mark and pipe design, the goal is made out of warp pipes, and the electric barrier features a typical brick-like pattern. Pretty neat! Next is the Bowser's Castle half that we already mentioned, and it comes complete with visible turrets and lava galore. The ground features a fire hazard design, along with a goal that looks suspiciously like a cage surrounded by torches. And of course the electrified barrier that features a chain link design. Gotta admit, it's pretty cool looking, or hot looking as it may be. Next up is this purple looking design, which we've identified as being Luigi's Mansion or more specifically, Gloomy Manor from Luigi's Mansion 2, which is perfectly fitting given that game was also produced by the series creator, Next Level Games. But in this case, that mansion also appears to wrap around the sides of the stadium too, which we can see from a couple of different angles, and they also reveal that there's viewing areas right below them too. As for the pitch itself, we can see the design of what might be a creepy looking tree in front of a window, along with a goal that looks awfully decorated, and an electric fence that seems to have a purple cobweb design. Creepy! 
Finally, we have Donkey Kong's half of the stadium, which is surrounded with foliage, tree houses, and spiked fences. On the field, we can see a barrel and vine decoration, with a gold made of wood and decorated with feathers, along with the electric fence which has a banana pattern on it. I think I might like that one the best. But regardless of which stadium themes you play in, you'll also find Jumbotrons fashioned to each one, in a thematically appropriate manner of course. In addition, you'll always find the same species in the crowd, being Toads, Yoshis, Shy Guys, and Koopa Troopas. Hey, at least some of them were able to find something to do with their time after being demoted from playable character status. Alright, we're nearly done here, but there's still a few final things I wanted to point out. Six of them, in fact. Number one. I love how Yoshi sticks his tongue out during his tackle. Two. Waluigi continues to be a god with his amazing head-spinning tackle. Number three. But nothing can top what Wario does when he receives a pass, where he literally grabs a ball with his mouth before throwing it into the goal. Number four. We can see that shots taken near the opponent's goal still have a neat slow motion effect. Number five. And speaking of goals, the celebration and disappointment animations are back after every point, which is a great, if also sad, touch. Number six. Finally, finally, did you see the pose that Peach struck here immediately after dropping in, but before standing up? It's exactly the same pose that she made back in Mario Strikers Charged, which is a great callback. And with that, our Mario Strikers Battle League analysis is complete. Woo! And I, for one, am hyped to play this game after waiting 15 years for a sequel. Anyways, thank you so much for watching, and of course, make sure to subscribe to Game Explain for more Mario Strikers Battle League, as well as tons more coverage from the recent Nintendo Direct. And with that, we'll catch you later. Bye everyone!